Donald Trump is the front runner for the Republican nomination, and because of that, voters deserve to know what he is accused of doing by special counsel Jack Smith, who indicted the ex-president on 37 criminal counts in connection with his handling of classified documents. Now, Smith pledged to seek a speedy trial in the case against Trump, and when it begins, the American people, quite frankly, should be able to hear it and see it. They should hear the prosecutors' allegations and their evidence about Trump storing hundreds of classified documents all over his Mar-a-Lago estate and refusing to give them back, as well as the ex-president's defense. It will be key for this trial to be as transparent as possible, especially if it happens at the same time as the election, when Americans may have to decide whether or not they will vote for Donald Trump. So how do you not hold a public trial? when the defendant is a serial liar and truth in this country is consistently under assault. Of course, there is also one other big complicating factor. The case is about highly classified and sensitive national security information. Nancy Gertner served as a federal judge for nearly 20 years and is now a senior lecturer at Harvard Law School. She joins me now. Nancy, it's great to have you with us. Uh, this is a, obviously a very complicated conversation, but I think a lot of people now are demanding because of the unprecedented nature of this, um, there needs to be more transparency and as much transparency as possible. How can the court balance the need for a public trial with the, classific the classified information involved in this case? So let, me, let me start at the classified information issue because that actually is an enormous complication. Even if you were sitting in the courtroom as a member of the public physically there, you may not be entitled to see the evidence uh, that is being presented in this case. There could be circumstances under which the only people who can see the evidence would be the judge, the lawyers who have been gotten a security clearance, um, and that would be it, and it would be kept from the public, even the public sitting there. So you can't you can't deny sort of how complicated this is going to be in a physical setting to deal with classified information, quite apart from cameras. The, the other side, which is um, uh, the, the Judicial Conference of the United States has been uh, resisting cameras in the courtroom from over 30 years. And the, the explanation, the rationale gets more and more ridiculous as time goes on. And I think we're at a moment when it is at its most ridiculous. And that is during the pandemic, Video was used to portray proceedings, to, to, to show proceedings, and the republic didn't fall. Uh, and now you're talking in many courts around the country about, you know, about dialing back on that. It was mostly civil proceedings, there was no question about it, but we learned how to do it consistent with the dignity of the courtroom because we had to. So the question is whether the judicial conference will back off on its opposed opposition to uh, cameras, whether or not the judge would be allowed to make an exception in this case in any event because of the public nature of it. And then how do you navigate a camera uh, when there are classified information? So, I mean, I think this is, this is complicated. A lot has to be weighed. Right. But the problem with the federal courts is that they haven't even been wish willing to engage in the discussion at all, ever. Yeah, and, 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 makes and I was going to pick up on that point because on one hand, you know, the Supreme Court has said that the presence of a camera does not compromise the due process rights of a defendant. And that's why we see in certain cases on the state level, at least, um, tri trials are broadcast. And even when the pandemic happened, as you mentioned, the Supreme Court began live streaming its own oral hearing. So to some extent, the presence of recording devices and more transparency has not undermined the credibility of the proceedings itself. What makes this case also even more compelling for it to be transparent is you have a judge that a lot of people have concerns about, given the way she ruled in the initial phases of right. this case. Do you think Judge Cannon would be amenable to broadcasting this trial? Uh, it, it may not be up to her exclusively, but do you have concerns about her judgment based on her initial rulings and her experience? that well, she can that, be that, fair that, and impartial. Right, there are two, two separate yeah. questions about whether she'd be amenable to uh, cameras. I mean, really, the federal judges have, I testified against the judicial conference when I was on the bench in favor of cameras because state courts have had cameras in the courtroom in incendiary trials 
bloody, horrible trials, and again, have managed to do it in a respectful way. So the notion that the federal court has backed off this doesn't make any sense, as I said, ever, and surely doesn't make sense now. Will Judge Cannon do it? Um, it's hard to say. I, I think it is certainly more comfortable for her not to. It's not more fair, but it's more comfortable. And on the broader question, implicit in what you've asked, on her remaining in the case, um, I, I'm, I'm, I doubt very much if she will recuse herself. And the only ground for the government to seek her recusal is that what she did in the investigation was not just bad judgment, but essentially carving out rules and procedures that made that that did not ever apply to a criminal prosecution and carving out special treatment of a federal because he was the president of the United States. So her ruling demonstrated a degree of bias, which was extraordinary. Will she recuse herself? Doubtful. Will Jack Smith move to recuse her? I actually think that that's doubtful as well. Uh, Nancy Grinner, it's a, obviously a complicated question, as you uh, mentioned, but I couldn't think of a better guest to speak to about this. It's certainly something uh, we will watch closely as we get more insight into how this trial unfolds. Nancy Grinner, thank you so much for your time and your insights. Thank you.